All right, let's dig into classifiers, which is a lot of what we're going to cover this week. So uh, as I mentioned in my lecture, um, classifiers apply labels to images or video. Um, we're going to start with using ImageNet. Uh, and as I mentioned in the lecture, ImageNet is a very common data set. Uh, it's one that people generally train on, um, especially for both generative and classifier models. Um, ImageNet uh, contains 1,000 different labels. Um, and you can actually open those up in a GitHub just here. So go ahead and click on this. And you'll leave Colab with that puppy. Um, and you can see all 1,000 classes of ImageNet. So you'll scroll down here and you'll see all of the many, many classes, uh, including toilet paper, um, mushrooms, volcanoes, uh, a lot of things I don't know what they are. Uh, I had to look up what a tench is. Apparently it's a European fish. Um, but for this video, and again, this is kind of what we talked about, which is the key here is to find uh, a model that gives you labels you're looking for. So in this case, um, I noticed that uh, this model contains cats, uh, oyster catchers, apparently. There we go. Uh, a whole bunch of cats, so tabby cats, tiger cats, Persian cats, Siamese cats, etc. So um, that means that I could definitely train this to find cats in videos. Um, and maybe I also want to, let's see if we got dogs, um, dogs, so let's look for a pug. There we go. Pug, pug dog. So, um, you know, one of my favorite films when I was a child was Milo and Otis. Um, so let's actually try to create a fan cam of just Milo or just Otis using this classifier. So again, we'll pass our video through these models and find out whether it classifies them as a dog or a cat or specifically in this case, a pug or a tabby cat. Um, now I should rem uh, mention again that ImageNet, uh, this particular model does not work on video. It works on individual frames. So what we're actually going to do is we're gonna start by turning all of our video clips into individual frames, and then we'll switch back to uh, the GPU and run um, our ImageNet classifier model. Now, uh, you don't need to use a GPU for this, it does work, but I would say if you're going to run a classifier on a lot of different images um, all at once, like say thousands upon thousands of images, then you definitely want to use a GPU, it will be much faster. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. So we're going to start by just connecting to the CPU. So go make sure you're in CPU. Um, high RAM doesn't really matter for what we're doing here, so you can do either of those. It's a little bit cheaper if you don't use high RAM. And of course, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to connect to our drive account as always. Go ahead and open this up, say yes. So now we're connected, we can go ahead and hit refresh here. We can do drive, my drive, and then we'll go into algo film. So I have already taken my Milo and Otis film and run it through both the PyScene Detect notebook and the FFmpeg, uh, or sorry, the FF Probe notebook in order to get its dimensions, length, that sort of thing. Um, and you'll see here Milo and Otis. So what I wanna do now is I wanna convert these into frames. And as we talked about in the lecture part of this uh, week, um, we don't really want every single frame. Um, because every single frame, like, you know, between a lot of the frames can be very, very similar. Um, so what we're actually going to do is run this cell. And what this cell will do is it'll create a new folder of just images for us. And we can set the frames per second. So one frame per second is probably fine. You could actually even set a fraction here. And what this would do is it would actually give you one frame every two seconds. Now, I don't remember how long my clips are. So I think a safe bet for me here is just one frame per second. So what you'll do is you'll go ahead and copy the path to your clips and paste that in the variable that says clip path. And then you will create a new folder if you haven't already called frames. And inside of there, we'll make a new folder that we'll call Milo Otis 1FPS. And you can see I've already done this. It's because I want to see how long this would take. But all you need to do is copy this in and go Milo, like whatever your file names are. And then I always recommend putting in what the FPS is that way you know, you know how big that folder might be. Um, you go ahead and run this. So you'll just run this cell. In my case, I've already run this, so I'm actually not really gonna worry about it too much. I'll hit stop. 
Um, I should mention this took about 30 minutes for a full feature length film. So again, you do need to give yourself time to process this stuff. If you're working with just short, um, shorter clips or TV shows or trailers, it'll be a lot faster, but um, I found that it takes about, this was probably like a 90 minute film, give or take, uh, and it did take about 30 minutes to actually do all the processing. I'm gonna go ahead and hit stop because I do have all these clips already. Um, once it's there, you'll go ahead and see that inside of here we have our folder. And then we've got a folder of every single clip name. And inside of there, we've got individual images. At this point, um, because I'm gonna operate on the entire folder, um, or this like basic full length feature film, I wanna switch back to the GPU. So let's go ahead and go runtime, change runtime type, and you can go the cheapest GPU. And I also recommend in this case, uh, setting high RAM, because we're gonna load a lot of images into our model. And it's gonna restart here, and then we just need to run these top two cells. So again, we need to reconnect to our drive. Um, the reason I recommend doing it that way is if this takes you 30 minutes, you don't wanna spend 30 minutes of a high-powered GPU, um, which is gonna be more expensive, it's gonna cost you more collab credits than uh, doing it on the CPU, which is what we use anyway. But it will save us time long-term to use a GPU for these classifiers. If you're only doing on a short set, you can use the CPU for everything and save yourself some, for some credits, but I'd probably recommend just doing it like this. So now we do need to install this, this, uh, this tool called Transformers. And then while this is done, we're gonna skip over this cell. Um, if you wanna clear out your console, you can just hit that little X button there. And what we're gonna need to do now is actually load our model. So remember, these are big models. Um, we're gonna use Hugging Face. Uh, Hugging Face is a popular tool for machine learning and allows, uh, it saves a bunch of the models and does some other nice stuff for us. So we're gonna load our models in. Now, one thing I should note is, unlike the last classifier we ran, which is that shot type, where we saved our model to our Google Drive, um, in this case, we can actually just run this every time um, and it will save the model to CoLab, but then when we come back, we need to run this again because our model isn't saved. But you'll see this one ran pretty quickly. It took 11 seconds. Um, some of the other models we're gonna look at this week will take much, much longer. Um, so it's kind of hit or miss whether this is nice. It does take some time to load these things in every time you use the notebook. Um, let's just double check this cell here. If I run this, it should spit out all the labels that our model is trained on. This is sometimes good if you've opened up a model for the first time and you're not sure the labels that it's using. Um, you can run this model.config.id2 label and it will spit out all the labels that are, the model has been trained on. So I spit this out and sure enough, I see all of my thousand labels, um, including the last one, which is toilet paper. I love that. I don't know who's gonna train a model or who's gonna uh, run a video data set. I'm trying to see if there's toilet paper in there, but maybe you will. Um, okay, so now we've loaded our model. We've double checked our labels to make sure they're accurate. Now what we wanna do is let's try to run this on a single image. Um, and let's actually just, I'm gonna change my file setup here a little bit and just grab uh, one and four, I assume. Um, so the way to find images is you can just grab a random one um, from your frames data set. So we'll go to drive, my drive, algo film, then go to frames, then open up Milo Otis one FPS or whatever yours is named. And then I would probably move to like the middle of the folders because that first couple frame, the first couple images or clips could be like trailer stuff or um, like production company logos, that sort of thing. So if you dive into the middle here, you should be able to see, uh, you know, a number of images. And if you double click on one, these are some pretty large images. I think they're 2K. So they do take a second to load. So sure enough, there is Milo in the water swimming. So I could grab this path and paste it in here. Um, for this demo, I'm actually going to use a pre-selected image because I want to show um, some of the downsides of using this particular model. So I'm going to run this. And what it's going to do is it's going to copy in the image data and then it's going to spit out 
um, both the image and what its predicted class is. And you'll see here, um, this is clearly a pug. Uh, this is Otis. Um, but our particular class is West Highland White Terrier. And then here is the confidence score. So remember, the confidence score is how confident the model is that this is a West Highland White Terrier. Um, so it's wrong, but it is fairly confident. Remember that um, 0.5 might be low if it were only comparing pugs to West Highland Terriers. Um, cause that's basically a crapshoot. That's like, you know, a, to a, coin, a coin toss. Um, in this case, because we have a thousand labels, deciding that this is, uh, 50%, uh, confidence is actually quite high. Um, because there's a thousand things it could be. And it says with, you know, half confidence that it's this, um, now it's, again, it's wrong, but, uh, it's kind of helpful to know why it's wrong or like, think about why it might be wrong. Now, it may be that this, because of an image or video frame is a little fuzzy, um, I might just not have seen pugs from behind like this. Maybe it needs the pug face to really pick it out. We don't know. So regardless, this thing is wrong, which is unfortunate, but let's look at how wrong it is. Um, this cell, again, you probably won't be able to run this for your images um, because you're probably not using the same thing I am. Um, but if you find an image of a pug, you'd upload it and see how accurate it is. Um, Let's run this, and this cell is going to spit out some data on, I found the exact class that is pug, um, it is the 254th um, ID. And then uh, if we run this, we'll actually be able to see, scroll up a little bit here, that it said a pug with less than 1% accuracy. So the confidence score of it being a pug is less than 1%. And remember that our white terrier is 50%. Um, that's quite high um, and we could actually go through our scores and actually look and see um, you know which ones we think uh, it is but in general what's kind of frustrating here is that this is pretty inaccurate and we'll actually find with ImageNet it's not super accurate because there's a lot of data um, a lot of labels um, and we'll look very quickly uh, in the next uh, tutorial on how to find a better model for this particular task um, but I think it's good just to start with ImageNet to sort of see if it works for you or if it doesn't or how close it is. Now, the other thing is that's nice here is it does know it's a dog, right? It didn't say it was a cat, it didn't say it was toilet paper. Um, so we could, you know, find a way around this. We could say, well, eventually, I just want all the dog classifications because um, at least it knows it's a dog. And I'll separate that from all the cat classifications that it could be. Uh, this is the challenge of using pre-made uh, models is, you know, they're not always accurate and you might have to work around them a little bit. Regardless, uh, this is giving me a dog, so let's use it and let's go with it. Next cell here will allow us to process a folder of images. So instead of operating on just one, we want to operate on the folder. So we can go ahead and run this first cell, which just saves some functions that we're going to use uh, for the rest of the notebook. There we go. And now let's actually grab a folder. So instead of this one where we point it to a path or an image, we're going to actually point it to a folder. So let's go ahead and just copy this folder from up here. And let's go down here and we'll paste this in. Now remember this points to an image. So I actually just want to delete the image path and just use the folder. And let's go ahead and hit run. So what this is going to do is actually going to operate on all of the indiv individual images inside of a folder. And what it's going to then look for is, um, let's see if we get, a, our, get an error here. Why is that? Is my model on not on the GPU? Ah, there we go. Okay. Um, gonna need to run a little fix here. This will not be a problem for you. It's a problem because I haven't updated this notebook yet. We're gonna put our model on the GPU, which is funny because we're now burning credits, but that's okay. Um, let me just rerun this. And now this folder should work. So, sorry, as I was saying, um, what this is going to do is actually going to process each image individually within the folders. And then it's going to take whatever the most commonly uh, categorized image is. So let's say for whatever reason, this uh, clip pans from Otis to Milo. So it pans from a dog to a cat. Now, every one of these frames would then be dog, 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 cat, cat, cat. So what we really want again here, because it's a little imprecise, 
is we want the most common classification from all these images. So that's all this does. It's going to process every one of those uh, clips. It's going to look for the most common label and then give us the average classification score or confidence score of that. So in this case, this folder is West, West Highland White Terrier, and it is a 41, 42% confidence. Um, now that's a little bit lower than what we had here. Um, and we could go in and look at every single individual class. Maybe sometimes it does realize it's a pug, um, but nine times out of 10, it says it's a White Highland Terrier. Kind of hard to say for sure. Um, again, it, really all we care about is this label. Um, now, so we've got this label. Now what we need to do is actually run this on every single uh, folder within our folders here. And the way to do that, we've done this before in the past with uh, the shot type classifier, is the first thing we wanna do is load in our JSON file. So we'll copy this path here. And then next we need the frames path. Now this is not just to a single folder, but to the uh, sort of master folder, let's call it. Copy this path. And the way this uh, particular notebook works is it only operates on individual uh, data already saved in JSON. So we need to add a filter. Um, and this is going to be the file name filter. So remember that all of our clips are named. If we go in here. Come on. It's a lot of files in here. Uh, all of our files are named Milo-Otis. Uh, this does need to be case sensitive, so make sure it just says Milo. Um, it could say Milo-Otis. This more or less just looks for a, a exact match within the file name. Um, so either way, this is then going to say just pull our JSON data that uses this, and then let's run this exact same thing here uh, just across the entire folder. So let's go ahead and run this. You'll notice I already ran a couple of these uh, just to demo and test, make sure this is working correctly. Um, it is now running on everything I, sat, I imagine. So we should be able to uh, get out the data that we want. Here we go. So uh, scene 11 is apparently a refrigerator or an ice box with a very low confidence. Um, here we have some dogs. Uh, here we have an Angora rabbit. I don't know if there's a rabbit in this movie. That might be a cat or our pug, um, I guess because it's white. Uh, but we're seeing the classification scores here kind of move around. So tiger cat, tiger cat. Um, interestingly enough, in 14, it is a very high confidence. Um, but in 15, it's a very low confidence. So again, we've yet to see tabby cat or pug, uh, which is, again, kind of a bummer because that's ideally what we should be getting out of these this model. Um, but we won't get it. So what I'm going to do now is I'm actually just going to stop the video. This is going to take a little bit of time to process. I'll let you know exactly how long it, it took when we come back. Um, and then we'll see what our results are. And then we'll be able to sort of figure out, like, can we actually use this model uh, for a certain purpose or should we try something else? And spoiler, we will try something else, but we can look at this data and see how we might be able to make it work for us uh, long term. So I'll be back in hopefully a couple minutes uh, once it's finished running. Okay, I'm back. That took uh, a little under an hour and a half, so not ideal. Um, how would we make this faster? So there's a couple ways we can make this faster. One is we could run it on a faster GPU. Uh, this is running on a T4, which is the slowest. Usually what you see is like a, a one and a half, two X speed up for every level you jump up in GPU. So it, it would very likely run faster if we did this uh, on a you know, V100 or A100. Now we burn through more credits, so that's one way. Um, the other way would actually be to change our FPS. So remember we did one frame per second. Uh, we could do half a frame per second, which would generate one frame every two seconds. That would mean less frames and less processing. Um, so just be aware of like that it does take some time um, in order to do a lot of this. So if you are gonna run this on multiple um, full length feature films, make sure that you're actually like using the right model, because we're going to look at a bunch of models this week. Uh, make sure you're using the, the best, the most ideal model for what you're trying to do. One thing I also want to mention, um, Desmond mentioned this in the Slack channel, and I think it's good for us to think about as well, is say you want to run this overnight. Say you know it's going to take a couple hours, um, and it's getting toward the end of the night, and you just want to go to bed. You could run this cell, and what will happen is that when this completes, this cell will run next, and it will disconnect your GPU. 
um, that's going to save you a couple credits, so it's probably good to run that. Um, again, just sort of keep an eye on how long things are running for, and then you can run this, and it will disconnect. Uh, now that we've got our data, um, let's just take a look at our data. So if we scrub through here, um, I think Milo is a tabby cat, and I didn't see anything that said tabby cat here. Speaking of cats, um, I do, however, see that uh, Otis is showing up here as a pug dog in a couple places. And I think that means that maybe we could do a collection of pug dogs and just sort of see how closely connected it is. Um, so let's actually do that next. So let's come down here. And let's actually, well, before we do that, let's copy and paste the pug pug dog label. And what we're going to do is we're going to now go through our JSON data set and capture anywhere we see pug pug dog. So we'll scroll down here and we'll see that uh, we now have the option of capturing um, our videos. So we're going to paste in the label here. Now it's important this label match exactly what is up here. So you'll see that we have the label, comma, confidence score. We want to match the label at exactly. If we leave in a space or if we miss a comma, um, it will not run. So make sure that you copy the exact label. And then we're also going to say as we go through that JSON data set to make sure that we only look at uh, stuff that has Milo uh, in the uh, file name. Let's go ahead and run this. And I'm just going to delete this. And there you go. It found 114 clips. I think there's some like 740 total um, that contain the pug pug dog category. So now we can go ahead and run this. And let's call this Otis. And this will give us just the Otis frames. And it will combine them all into a video. And what I'll do is I'll upload this to Vimeo um, so people can check it out and see how well it did. My guess is it will be fairly accurate, but maybe not the most accurate uh, thing. So while this runs, I also want to mention, um, Sean mentioned, I believe in week one, that uh, there's also a file format called EDL. Um, and EDL is something edit list or something. Um, but what you can do is you can open that in both Resolve or uh, Premiere and actually see all of your clips rather than generating one video where there might be some mistakes in there. Um, an EDL file will allow you to open your clips um, in Resolve and then you could actually delete anything that didn't match. So this is kind of a nice way of getting like a mix of like being able to do some edits yourself while also using these tools to process that. Um, I will cover an entire video on how to use this. It'll probably be a five to 10 minute tutorial. Um, but this will exist in all of the uh, files this week, except for the description stuff, which we'll get to later. Um, so if you do want to play with it directly in Resolve or in Premiere, you can go ahead and do that. Uh, so you'll just run this cell. Um, you will need to set the manual FPS, so you might need to look at um, some of your video clips to make sure it matches. And it will create a folder of both your clips and your EDL file. So I'll cover a tutorial on that. Um, so at this point, let's wrap up here. Um, I think overall our kind of judgment is ImageNet is good. Say if I want to capture a bunch of different animals, I want to capture toilet paper and a bunch of other things. But it might not be ideal for just dogs or cats because it might get the dog category wrong or the cat category wrong. So after this we'll take a look at a different model that is just cats versus dogs as a classifier and see how that does. So I'll see you over there in just a minute.